energy and heat capacity. So we've seen that uh, temperature is uh, related to the molecular energy that is uh, within uh, an object. And we realize that temperature will increase as we increase the energy, uh, which increases the random motion in uh, molecules. Uh, there's a variety of ways of increasing that energy. We could release chemical energy, like in a fire, or um, convert electrical energy, like in an electric range. Uh, now, you should realize, though, that uh, there's a subtlety connecting temperature and energy, and that is that temperature does not indicate the total amount of energy that an object has. It um, indicates the average amount of energy per molecule. So uh, to give you an, an example of this distinction, uh, if I take sparks from a sparkler, uh, those are uh, burning iron dust, and that burning iron dust has a very high temperature. It's uh, several thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but if I sprinkle some of that dust onto my hand, and I'll show you that in uh, this video, so um, you see this um, dust is being lit by the flame, and my hand is underneath, and there's uh, some of these uh, sparks are landing on my hand. Uh, however, even though they have a temperature of about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, they are not burning my hand because they have a uh, very little total energy. So uh, the amount of total energy is small, even though the average energy uh, is large, but they are uh, tiny. Now, an analogy of this would be that if uh, grains of sand or dust were falling on your head from uh, a great height, uh, that doesn't hurt because those individual grains have very little energy, despite the fact that they fall from a great height. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a bowling ball falling on your head, even if the bowling ball is uh, only a few feet above your head, it's still going to um, uh, be very painful because uh, it would have a huge amount of uh, energy. So uh, a gallon of molten iron or a pot full of boiling water, those um, would both be quite uh, painful uh, because they would have a very large amount of energy. Now, uh, some people need a lot of money to make them happy, and uh, some people don't. Well, it's sort of like that with temperature and energy with uh, materials. So some objects uh, have a high heat capacity, and uh, they need a lot of energy to raise their temperature. But if you have an object that has a low heat capacity, then it doesn't need much energy to raise its temperature. An example of this would be uh, at the beach. The uh, water has a high heat capacity, so even though the sun's been shining on it all day, uh, its temperature doesn't go up very much. On the other hand, sand has a low heat capacity, so the same sunshine on the sand uh, raises its temperature uh, quite a bit. So. If you don't want to burn your feet, you uh, stay in the water. Uh, we can demonstrate this in the lab. Uh, take a paper cup full of sand and a paper cup full of water, put them both under the Bunsen burners, and the cup with the sand, uh, it doesn't take much energy to raise the temperature of the sand, and so that paper cup bursts into flames, while the cup with the water, the water can absorb uh, an enormous amount of energy uh, and only raises temperature by uh, a little bit. So different materials have um, different uh, heat capacities and uh, we measure this as the specific heat capacity, so that's the heat capacity uh, per kilogram of a material. Uh, the lowest heat capacities are 
with the metals, uh, like gold, copper, steel. Then intermediate ones would be things like sand, stone, glass, bone, plastics. Uh, and then the highest ones uh, would be something like flesh, uh, because it has a lot of water, and then uh, water itself has a, a very high uh, specific heat capacity. Uh, here's a little demonstration. We, we're yeah. going to take uh, this uh, dollar bill and take some of this Everclear grain alcohol. It's uh, 150 proof. Then uh, shake this up so that the dollar bill is nice and wet with the uh, grain alcohol and uh, make sure it's nicely saturated take it out and light it on fire and you see that the the bill basically uh, did not burn at the very end there's a tiny little part on the corner that um, uh, got dry, and uh, that happened to uh, catch. But uh, even though the dollar bill was completely engulfed in flames, it did not uh, burn because the heat produced by the alcohol, although it, the alcohol produces a lot of heat, uh, the water that is um, in the Everclear has a very high uh, heat capacity, and so the water actually absorbed all of that energy. Uh, much of the water um, evaporates uh, with that energy, or is boiled off, uh, but it still carries away that energy, or absorbs that energy, so the temperature of the bill actually doesn't um, uh, go up very much. Uh, here's a, a similar example with um, uh, using uh, methane, which is just natural gas. Today, so, so, okay, so, so what um, I did there was before uh, starting, I made sure that my uh, hands and arms were soaking wet, and then uh, when I scooped that methane foam into my hand and it was lit, uh, the energy that was released in that combustion uh, mostly went into uh, heating up the water in my uh, hands. And um, since that happened fairly quickly, uh, it was not enough um, energy to actually uh, burn my uh, hand. And it's a similar thing with uh, fire walking. You can safely uh, walk on coals as long as your uh, feet are very wet. Uh, the water has a very high heat capacity, so um, it can absorb that energy. Uh, the ashes themselves have fairly low heat capacity, so uh, somewhat like the uh, sparkler sp uh, sparks. Uh, now, uh, Having said all that, if you're uh, careless, you, you can get badly burned, so um, I'm not recommending that you try this without uh, professional guidance. So in uh, summary, uh, temperature of an object depends on the average amount of energy per molecule. Uh, materials with high specific heat capacity, like water, they need a lot of energy to raise their temperature. And um, other materials... Uh, that have a low specific heat capacity, like sand or glass or metals, uh, they don't require much energy to raise their temperature. So hopefully that gives you a sense of what the difference is with um, different materials and how they are heated and how that affects uh, temperature.